recording it so we can share it with folks who are not here yet. All right. <clears throat> so thank you for taking time out of your, your Monday evening uh, to learn a little more about Artfully and how you can use it as a Fractured Atlas sponsored project. Uh, for, for those who don't have any familiarity with Artfully at all yet, which is totally okay, Artfully is Fractured Atlas's online ticketing software that also functions as a customer relationship management software, or CRM. We'll be using that term pretty frequently. Um, so as I'm sure you're mostly aware of at this point, uh, Fractured Atlas works with artists across disciplines all over the country. So in working with artists for all this time, we've begun to hear things that are potentially missing in the arts administration landscape. Uh, a while ago, our members came to us saying that there was a need for a simpler ticketing solution and a customer relationship management software that was uh, less expensive, intuitive, uh, flexible for the business rules of different arts organizations, and integrated with our products and services that would be easy enough to train volunteers on if you had, say, people who are gracious enough to help you at the door when you're holding an event. So we went to the drawing board, and a few years ago, we came out with the first iteration of Artfully with three main pieces of functionality. We like to call the bundles of functions in Artfully kits. So these are, ah, sorry, I'm Marcus. I'm the, um, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Marcus, and I am the Artfully Program Specialist. Um, so if you write in about Artfully, odds are you're going to be talking to me. Or if you give us a call, I'll be the one who answers the phone. So in um, we launched Artfully with three main features of functionality. Uh, a module for ticketing, accepting donations, as well as tracking your fans. And we've since added features for uh, sending correspondence to your supporters through MailChimp and are currently beta testing some features for selling flex and season passes, as well as memberships. We're going to go through um, most of these core parts of Artfully's functionality, and we'll have plenty of time for questions. On the horizon, we are also looking at features for assigned seating and enhanced fundraising campaign tracking. Before we get into ticketing, um, I want to talk a little bit about how you create your first events in Artfully. Setting up your Artfully organization is very simple. You just go to www.artful.ly when you're either logged in to your Fractured Atlas account, or you just log in with your Fractured Atlas credentials there, you'll automatically get logged in and prompted to create your Artfully organization. Once you create the account, this is what you'll see when you log into Artfully. Uh, this is a rather active organization that has several events as well as active ticket sales happening. Uh, from this dashboard, you can create a new event or check in with the folks who have most recently interacted with your organization, either from buying tickets, making a donation, or people who have received a MailChimp campaign from you. Uh, that touches a little more on the CRM, which we'll get into later in the presentation. But first, we want to talk about creating events which is as simple as filling out a form. You tell us the what, the where, and the why about the event that you want to hold. You set your capacity for the event, how many tickets you can sell. Uh, you can set your prices once we activate the paid event ticketing kit. And you can provide any relevant descriptions of those ticket types. And then it's a matter of scheduling shows in the calendar. You can do everything from a one-night-only event 
to an open-ended run, and you're ready to sell tickets to your supporters. We provide several ways for your fans to purchase tickets when you're, sell when you're ticketing an event, and we'll cover each of them in this section. The first is through a storefront that is automatically created whenever you make an event. We also have a widget or a WordPress plugin for integrating ticketing onto your own website. And then for when people are arriving at the door, we have a feature called the box office, which is designed for selling tickets to walk-ups and checking people in. It's designed really for speed. And then finally, the sales console, which is great for conducting orders on the phone where somebody may want to buy tickets as well as make a donation and do it all in one fell swoop. So this is a look at the storefront. This is automatically created whenever you make an Artfully event. It is definitely the most common way for people to sell tickets through the app. And when somebody is looking to buy a ticket themselves, they select the show date that they want to attend, select the number of tickets they want to add to the cart, and then they just fill out a brief checkout form. Uh, so this is definitely the kind of the easiest out of the box way to ticket an event. Uh, this each event gets its own unique link that you can share via email and social media, and is recently been updated to be mobile responsive. All right, so that's the storefront. The second option is through a widget or WordPress plugin. This is a bit of code that you can integrate into your own site. Uh, this is a bit more technical of an option and often requires the assistance of a web developer to get it up and running. But when you do have the widget installed, the ticket buyer selects the date from your run of shows, and the show date will then expand to reveal your ticket types. The customer then selects the number of tickets just as they would in the storefront, and a shopping cart pops up from the bottom of the page, so the customer can check out without having to leave your site. So that is the widget. Um, slightly more technically involved option, but it is there for selling tickets to your events. And then finally, once you've been selling tickets and it comes up to showtime, it's likely you'll also have people who want to buy tickets at the door, and you'll also need a way to check people in. And so for that, we have the box office. Uh, the, the box office interface is unique to each show in your run. So each show has its own box office. And there, you select the number of tickets that you want to sell to a person. You can here choose various tender types, be it cash, credit, check, or comp. And then you enter the payment and contact information, and you're able to check out. The checkout form is abbreviated here, so you can help get through your line at the door a bit faster. And then finally, we have the sales console. Uh, this is designed for more complex and over the phone orders for organizations that are selling tickets, taking donations, and might also be selling uh, season passes or potentially memberships. Here you build the order with the various inventory tiles. And once you're ready to check out, you just click the green checkout button and are taken to a payment form that is quite similar to the box office. So while the box office is just for selling tickets to that one show, the sales console can be used for everything from selling tickets and taking donations to even more building a season package if you're selling tickets to multiple events at the same time. And then once you've been selling tickets, you'll also need a way to check people in, as I mentioned before. And so for that, we have a digital door list. Uh, you can think of the door list as the other half of the box office. You'll notice at the top of the page, there's a button so that you can switch 
rapidly between the door list and the box office. So you can easily check people in as well as sell tickets back and forth. And when you want to check someone in, all you need to do is click on their name and the corresponding check boxes in their orders. When you do that, the progress bar at the top of the page will fill up. You can search the door list for notes and people's names. And when you check people in, the attendance of the ticket buyer will be recorded on their contact record. Uh, so the idea is that through Artfully, you're not only tracking who is buying tickets to your show, but you're also keeping track of who attended. That we'll get into a little bit more when we talk about Artfully CRM. Whenever someone buys a ticket to your event through any sales channel, as long as an email address is collected, they will receive an order confirmation that includes uh, the payment details, if it was a paid ticket, any um, relevant contact information that you've added when creating the event, and a link to a Google map for the venue. So these are automatically sent to people when they buy tickets. All right. Does anybody have questions on uh, ticketing? After this, we will uh, get into leave, we'll get into some of our beta features. Um, but if anybody has questions about ticketing, I'm happy to answer them here. All right. Feel free to add questions in the question box if you have them. Oh, all right. Ellen is asking if you can require certain contact information on checkout. Uh, so the form when someone buys a ticket requires the customer to enter their name, email address, phone number, and physical address. Um, so that information um, is required at checkout, and that checkout info is what helps to automatically populate your CRM as you sell tickets to your events and accept donations. Awesome. So next up. All right, so we also want to talk about some of the features that we have that are currently in beta. Uh, we right now have a set of features for selling flex or season passes. This is really great if you're ticketing multiple events and you want to have a way for people to buy a pass that can get them into every event that will give the attendee the flexibility to choose what dates they want to attend. So when the passes kit is installed, the storefront gets a buy passes page where you can create multiple pass types. Uh, you can create really as many pass types as you want. And when somebody goes to buy the pass, that arrives in the customer's inbox in the form of a unique discount code. So this is a code where they would just then add the tickets for the shows that they want to attend. They put the code in the discount code field at checkout which then makes the price of the ticket $0. And because when the customer has purchased the pass, the contact information has already been collected, it gets automatically filled in so the customer doesn't have to do it a second time. Like I said, this is really great if you are doing a, a series of events throughout your season and you're potentially having multiple dates of each show. This lets your customers choose which dates they want to see and you can even make it a flex pass. So if somebody wants to buy two tickets to one event and three tickets to another, if your pass has five tickets on it, you can set up your ticketing that way as well. It's designed to have some flexibility for you. All right. And then um, Ellen also asked, for thank you for your purchase emails and other communication, can you customize the text? Um, largely no. So for the 
receipt details. Uh, when somebody buys a ticket, you can um, add some information like parking details, uh, but the bulk of the ticket email is not customizable. So there's some customization, uh, but the as a whole, the template is not customizable. All right. So from passes, we'll move on to donations. Now, for donations to a sponsored project, Artfully gives you a few options. Sponsored projects. Um, well, Artfully is used by both 501c3 charities and Fractured Atlas sponsored projects. So if you eventually become a 501c3 organization, we can turn on the 501c3 exclusive features on for you. Uh, but in this presentation, we'll focus on the options available to sponsored projects. So for a fiscally sponsored project, when you are selling tickets to your event, your donors can add a tax deductible donation on top of the ticket price. You can also install a donation widget on your website. And uh, because of Artfully's tight integration with Fractured Atlas's uh, fiscal sponsorship program, whenever somebody donates to your sponsored project, the information from that donation, including the donor's contact information and the amount, will get automatically synchronized into your Artfully account. So when somebody is checking out, uh, if you're a sponsored project, you will have the option to, well, your donors will, your supporters will have the option to add a donation to the cart at checkout. So here they can choose to add the donation and then they just fill out the checkout information as usual. It's also possible to create a donation widget that you integrate on your site. So this is slightly different from the ticketing widget, which is dependent on a specific run of shows. But for the donation widget, you can um, have a box on your page um, and accept fully deductible donations for your donors here. Um, all donations will go to your sponsored fund and will be treated like any other donation to fiscal sponsorship. And then finally, whenever somebody makes a donation on your sponsored project page, that information from the donation will automatically get synchronized into your Artfully CRM. Does anybody have questions about uh, how Artfully works with donations and your sponsored project? Um, so LNS, is there a donation widget uh, just through Fractured Atlas, or do you need to use Artfully? So the the donation widget is generated through Artfully, uh, but it communicates and processes the donations through Fractured Atlas to your fiscal sponsorship. Does that make sense? So you do need to create an Artfully organization to get the code for the widget and integrate it onto your site. But the, the donation itself will go directly to your sponsored fund. Uh, yes, you correct. So you do need to, um, so Ellen asked if you need to create the Artfully account in order to solicit online donations that go through your website. That is correct. And uh, you would need the fiscally sponsor, you need you would need the fiscal sponsorship team to approve the donation text before you make it public. And Carrie asks if the widget looks like the donor is still on your website. That is correct. So Carrie, you are you are correct. It will um, that's it gets integrated to your website. Um, Artfully, and that's also another good question. Carrie also asked if Artfully allows tiered giving levels. So the widget does not currently offer giving levels. So if that is something that you want to offer, I recommend doing it through your sponsored donations page. Uh, we hope to 
add those features in the future. But at the moment, um, if you want to do tiered giving levels, which are uh, giving levels where you can make a donation partially deductible, those still need to go through your Fractured Atlas sponsored donation page. So now that we've covered ticketing and donations, we'll talk about how they come together. Oh, looks like we've got one more question. Um, Emily is asking um, how the widget works. It's a bit of code that integrates with, um, with the software for your sponsored projects. So um, it is a more technically involved setup. Um, I'm happy to answer any other widget questions you have um, after the webinar, but it's something that typically requires the assistance of a web developer to get integrated into your site. Oh, no worries. No worries, Emily. And uh, Carrie asked if, um, to uh, giving levels could be added as different types of tickets, uh, they would not be able to because tickets are dependent on a specific time, whereas the donation can be made at any time. Um, unfortunately, it's just it's not possible right now, but it is something that we hope to add in the future. And Carrie, if you have any other questions about uh, giving levels and partial deductibility, um, we can absolutely follow up on those after the webinar. Cool. All right. So once we, um, now that we've covered ticketing as well as donations, uh, we'll talk about how they come together in the people section. Um, so this is where all of that information gets gathered into one place and where you can put it to use to better communicate with your supporters. All right. So people can be created in your Artfully account in a number of ways. They can be created from a ticket sale or a donation. They can be created manually, um, so you can just make a, a record for one person at a time. They can be imported through a CSV template. So if you have like a bunch of data from uh, another software you use, perhaps you have your, your contact list somewhere, you can import those people into Artfully. And you can also synchronize them into your account through MailChimp. So this is what an artfully contact record looks like. Remember when we saw that list of recent activity of people's interactions with your artfully account? Each of those names correspond with a record in your artfully CRM. There are definitely more ways to get to them than that recent activity feed. But this is an example of a very filled out contact card. So whenever somebody makes a donation, buys a ticket, uh, the, a contact record will automatically be created for them. So you can start tracking who's supporting you, um, you'll, the address information will be collected, phone numbers. Uh, the recent activities will get logged in an action feed. So right now we can see, you can even star actions. So the five hundred donation, the five hundred dollar donation is starred and pinned to the top, and you can see their ticket sales when they went to a meeting. That's an example of an action that was logged manually by an admin member. But when you check someone in at an event, a went action for that show will automatically be added. You can add social media information. Uh, that's not something that will be automatically added, but you can add it yourself for quickly keeping track of what your fans are doing on social media. If your supporter has a Gravatar, that will automatically be imported, or you can upload a photo yourself. You can log what company somebody works for, what their position is. You can also tag folks with things that perhaps we don't have in the CRM. You can add tags to multiple people. And finally, up in the corner, 
we have what we call the revenue meter. So here you will see the lifetime total that Cecilia has given through her interactions with an organization. You can also switch it to specifically see how much somebody has donated and or how much um, the person has purchased in terms of tickets. And if you roll over those dots, it will actually flip to show you kind of where Cecilia fits in terms of the average lifetime value of one of your organization's supporters. So you're, you're collecting all of this information right in one place. And we've also uh, synchronized this account with MailChimp. So your MailChimp lists and groups will appear on contact records. You can subscribe them right from their contact record. And when you add somebody to MailChimp, it will synchronize them into your Artfully account. When somebody buys a ticket uh, and you have the MailChimp kit integrated, they will also have the option to sign up for your mailing list right there. If you have contacts in from another system and you can get them into a CSV, it's possible to import them into Artfully. This is probably one of the more advanced features. But we have a template that includes the contact information that Artfully can read. And once you get your information formatted in there, you can upload it into Artfully and it will create contact records for them. If you're interested in importing uh, and you're getting your files ready, definitely feel free to send me an email and include the file and I'd be happy to look over them for you to make sure everything uh, looks good before you upload it into the software. And then finally, once you have all of this information, it's really a great tool for you to gain new insights into kind of trends among your supporters and find ways to better target your communications to them. Um, so it may be a little hard to see, but this is our advanced search feature. So this is where you can go to build searches about your supporters. Uh, it's been fairly recently overhauled. And the way that it works is you create different search conditions for what you want to search for. Uh, we now allow for Boolean style searching. So you can search for people who match any or all of your search conditions. So you can either cast a really narrow net and only show the people who match your search criteria exactly. Or if you want people who match even just one of these three search criteria, you could do that as well. Uh, you can search by donation, uh, actions, ticket purchases. You can search by location. Um, so in this case, we are looking for people who gave more than $50 from the beginning of this last year and who are not located in New York City or New York State and have an email address. So we've turned up 18 out of 3,000 contacts. You can then, from these search results, tag people. You can log an action that will appear on all of their records. You can export them as a CSV. So you can send them your latest um, fundraising appeal. And the idea is that you can, from this information, identify segments of your audience so you can write much more personal communications to them. Uh, one, one example that I also like to bring up is um, we have, there's an organization, there's a few organizations actually that are selling season passes and they like to be able to send their season pass holders a reminder to purchase their tickets. Uh, if they have, say, purchased tickets to the first event in the season but haven't gotten them to the second yet. So they build a search for people who have a pass but haven't purchased tickets to the second performance. And then they use that information to export it as a CSV and send those folks uh, a targeted email campaign reminding them 
hey, it's time to purchase tickets for the next event in the season. It's sure to sell out quickly. You can also do negative searching. So sometimes it's really important not only to know who has done something, but also who hasn't. So any of the search conditions, and there are a lot more of them, uh, can also be searched in the negative. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about um, advanced search while we're on it? All right, Ellen asked, what is tagging contacts and what does that look like? That's a great question. I'm gonna um, just pop back to the contact card. So the tags are these words that are in the gold boxes. Um, so for example, we've tagged Cecilia as a board member and a volunteer. So we don't ha necessarily have a search filter for people who have volunteered to help you, but you can tag all of your volunteers or board members, and we have an advanced search filter for your tags. So you could search for them later. For example, we could add for people who've donated $50, are not in New York, have an email address, and are or aren't a board member. Um, so it's allowing you to add additional dimensions to searches for things that may not necessarily uh, be built in, but are can be built out through tags. The other thing I want to mention is you can also create a list segment from any advanced search. And list segments uh, are essentially saved searches, but they're dynamic saved searches. So we could, from this search, save it as a list segment um, and return to it six months later. And once we've returned to it, if more people have given more than $50 and met this search criteria, that number will have changed from the last time uh, you ran it. So you get to come back and the search results are already updated with everybody who's relevant to it. Does anybody have more questions about advanced search? All right. Um, and Ellen is asking if you can search by um, like uh, the number of donations at a time instead of a donor who has given that much. Um, currently, you can only do um, searches for people who have given a specific amount, uh, not at any time. Yeah, so it's not the amount of the donation, it is going to always be um, the number of, the amount of the donation in total, but you can limit it by time frame. So you could be by people who have given $500 in a three month period, um, and you can have a beginning and end period for the search. Oh, and uh, Jim, I'm very sorry I missed your earlier question. Um, the technology you need to install the widget is really like website building technical knowledge. Sorry, I, I missed that question earlier. All right. Um, and then for, and then Ellen also asked, what about searching for the first time donor or ticket buyer? I'm trying to think if there is, hmm. I don't think there's a way to do that, to search by the first time somebody has donated or ticketed. Um, it probably wouldn't be sustainable for the entire lifetime of your organization, but if, say, you have ticketed three events and you go back, um, you could... Say you've ticketed three events and you're looking at 
the people who've bought tickets to event number two or three, you could do a search for people who have purchased tickets to event number three, who have not purchased tickets to event one, and who have not purchased tickets to event two. So there are there would be ways to find some aspects of that, but um, we don't have a specific search filter for uh, searching by the first time someone's donated. All right. Um, so then we all, oh. Um, Yvonne is asking, how can you link your sponsored project and artfully to websites of other professional organizations? Um, can you elaborate more about what kinds of professional organizations you're thinking of? That may be a question that might be better answered um, post-webinar later in the week. But I'd really be happy to answer it. So Yvonne, definitely, definitely hold on to that thought and I'll be happy to, to kind of talk with you more about that later this week. Uh, we also like to chat about what the costs are. Um, so for contact man management, ticketing free events, and connecting your MailChimp account, all of those features are free. For online ticket purchases, the customer pays a $2 per ticket service fee, and there is a 3.5% credit card processing fee. So for ticketing, those are Artfully's fees. The ticket buyer pays uh, $2 on top of the ticket price, and the 3.5% credit card processing fee gets deducted from the ticket revenue. For passes and memberships, there's a $5 service fee, and that can be either paid by the ticket buyer as a service fee, or you can roll it into the cost of the ticket. So for um, the pricing, uh, a $15 ticket, the ticket buyer would pay $17. Um, our Revenue for that is $2, the credit card processing company gets 53 cents, and the producer gets uh, $14.47. So for a $15 ticket, you'd have $14.47 revenue per ticket. For donations to sponsored projects, only the 3.5%, I mean, sorry, only the 7% fiscal sponsorship fee is charged. So for a $100 donation, it would be the standard $7, and you would get $93 from that donation. And then, as I mentioned before, for the passer membership, the um, fee can either be added as a service fee or paid by the producer, where the customer sees kind of a nice round ticket price, but the revenue is a little lower. And then finally, we also like to talk a little bit about how the software gets made. Um, so Artfully is in a state of constant development. We listen to what producers are looking for in the software. And we take that and put things into the design and planning phases. We then implement them and release it out into the wild with friendly organizations who are interested in being beta testers. And from their feedback, we start the process all over again. Uh, Artfully began by holding community design sessions in cultural hubs across the country. And that process uh, while it took place in person, originally now continues online. We have an active feature request forum where producers can suggest new ideas for features they would like to see added to the software. They can also vote and add comments to other producers' requests. And then we notify them when those features get developed. Um, so we do our very best to prioritize the features that get the most votes. And that is how everyone gets to influence how Artfully gets developed. Uh, we also have an online knowledge base 
with that documents Artfully's features and how to use them. There's helpful um, tips, articles, and tutorials, and uh, it's available through the app. In the upper right hand corner, there's a help button that can take you right to the knowledge base. Currently, we're uh, beta testing memberships, flex and season passes, as well as relationships and households. If you have questions about any of those, please follow up with me after the webinar and I'll be happy to chat with you and see if they're a fit for your organization. And then in the future, we're looking to develop uh, assigned seating, uh, advanced fundraising campaign tracking, and more advanced uh, reporting on show revenue, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, oh, dear. All right, and Tara's asking um, if she'll be able to access this webinar later to refresh herself on the info. Yes, uh, we have uh, in the knowledge base uh, recorded versions of the webinars posted, uh, and you should receive a copy of the webinar once uh, the session is over. Um, so you will be able to access the webinar and the knowledge base is available 24 seven. Um, do, does anybody have any additional questions? I'm happy to take a few more before we, we wrap up this evening. All right. Great. Awesome. Yvonne, I'll um, touch base with you in this week. Um, great. Well, if um, anybody has any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're really happy to chat with you. Um, my Our email address is support at artful.ly. And you could reach us um, at 888-692-7878. Um, same as the normal fractured Atlas business hours. Um, I'm 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. All right. And if you have questions about Artfully, please don't hesitate to reach out during the week. I'm happy to, happy to answer any questions. All right. Well, thank you all for taking the time out of your schedules. And I'll look forward to hearing from you soon. You're very welcome. Have a good night.